Oxford Street in London. Up until recently, Europe's busiest shopping streets with three and a half million people walking these pavements on a weekly basis. This is home to the biggest names in British retail. Marks and Spencer, Topshop, Debenhams, John Lewis, Selfridges. Since COVID-19 struck, so many of these retail outlets are boarded up with its occupants having left town permanently and left the rest of these retail units wondering exactly what the future holds for high street stores. 2020 saw almost 10,000 stores disappear from our high streets and recent figures from the new West End company reveal that footfall in London's West End was down 73% year on year in the first month of post-lockdown retail trading. So I used to work down here and you'd literally have to fight to get round the people. I couldn't be more socially distanced. And yet the full force of its impact has yet to be felt, according to accountants PwC. More closures are predicted this year, with the high street fashion and betting industry's hardest hit. For those stores that survive, the shopping experience is likely to look very different. The high street giants are doing an amazing job of making shopping in the store as comfortable and as safe for us all as possible. What they don't know is how long we're going to have to wear masks for. Nobody minds these hardships, but it is more convenient to be doing it from your laptop at home. So this stretch of Oxford Street is like department store way. Debenhams was the great casualty of COVID-19, but its neighbours, House of Fraser, John Lewis, these guys all need to rediscover their wow factor. Selfridges is like the centrepiece of West End retail in London. A beautiful building, a beautiful venue, and since Harry Gordon Selfridge opened these doors in 1908, always a different way to do retail. The American millionaire's aim was to make an art of window display and upgrade window dressing. It's that sort of thinking high street retailers could be learning and stealing from the fast growth digital brands. These bells, these chimes, like London's Big Ben, signal the doors opening for Selfridges today. But rather than the droves of its heyday, there's hardly anybody here. And while Selfridges still attracts customers, albeit in reduced numbers, not far away is an ever-present reminder that no brand, no matter how beloved, is immune to market forces. So what can brands do to survive the next few years? I know a man who might have an idea. I've asked Justin Pierce to join me. Now, Justin, 10 years ago, on about half a mile that way, we used to inhabit the same newsroom. He was editor of New Media Age and I was editor of Marketing Week. This guy knows Soho, he knows retail, he knows fashion, and he's been coming to Soho most of his career. If anyone can give me a view on the future of the high street and what it means, it's Justin. Justin Pierce. Hey, Mark, how you doing? After writing about e-commerce and indeed m-commerce for many years now, few people in the country know the new way of retailing like Justin does. I want to know from him what he thinks the best strategies are for those high street survivors. We've just come off Oxford Street where even at 10.30 this morning on a beautiful day, uh, there was hardly anybody about. Um, we're not quite there yet, despite the stores having opened. Definitely not there yet at all, you know. I believe we're on the verge, uh, you know, lockdown officially, hopefully ending on the 21st of June. Uh, so all, all the big high street retailers, all, all retailers are ready. You know, they've been doing so much in the last year. The ones that have survived, obviously, there's been a number of quite, quite horrific casualties. But behind the scenes, you know, they're all ready. They're all putting, as you say, they're putting the measures in place to make shopping safe even when, we're, when the pandemic is you know, officially over. So they're all ready to go. But yeah, you're right. It's been a horrible, horrible 12 months. That some of the retail answers, the quick fire solutions, the quick wins might be coming from food delivery service because some of those cafes, restaurants have done really astonishingly well online, both in terms of service, quality, um, uh, range, but also the delivery and the packaging and the sort of the elegance of the uh, uh, of what comes to your door now. Tell me about some of the um, some of the fast food brands that you've been really 
impressed with? Grind, Shoreditch Grind, which was, as it says, a Shoreditch coffee shop that quickly expanded into, into more coffee shops. And there's one not far from here that's got a cocktail bar, you know, and then the pandemic shut. And that was a high street coffee shop. They depended on high football. But high volume. High volume, high volume. But then they quickly changed and became almost a sort of a, a DTC coffee brand. Beautiful packaging, fast delivery, fast refills, refills, seamless experience. Suddenly that's, that was a, an online brand. And that, that was a high street coffee shop. Yeah. You know, it's flipped. If you could give one piece of advice to these big retailers to avoid going the way that unfortunately Debenhams did, what big one piece of advice would you give? Don't stop. Don't stop the move to digital, but don't stop the move not just to digital, but the move to providing a fully uh, fully integrated experience across all your channels. Because that's the point. It's not saying do a better website or have better e -com a better M commerce or have a better mobile site or be better on TikTok. It's just make sure your brand is seamless, frictionless across every channel so that every customer has the same amazing experience no matter where they are, if they're on TikTok or if they're in a high street shop in Bolton. So never stop, never consider the job done. No, never stop. So it was lovely to see Justin. If anybody knows retail, that guy does, right? But I still feel like we've got more questions than answers. We're gonna try and find a way of bringing out all the leading lights of retail to have a conversation about what the high street looks like and specifically what life on the digital high street looks like. What do retailers have to do? What are the answers? What are the strategies? What are the tricks? Let's find out. Meanwhile, I'm going to go shopping. <laughs>